Hey guys, Mac here. We're doing Splinter Cell Blacklist. This is Perfectionist plus no kills all in one uh, video. This level is American Consumption and I do this using the stun gun as well as um, non-lethal knockouts and I might use a sticky noisemaker. I do not have any upgrades to my suit or any of my weapons or goggles. And uh, once you reach this part here, you're going to want to turn on your goggles and sneak around. Um, I did restart the checkpoint uh, starting from when I came out of the vent so the enemies might be slightly lined up a little bit differently than what you have. Uh, but this is something similar to what you'll get. You'll want to walk across the scaffolding, zip line down, climb down the ladder. And I use, as you see here, I use my night vision. You can turn it off and you see decently in this light. Although I recommend the night vision, you can see the uh, darker areas a lot better and you can see exactly where the light is and where it's not. We're going to sneak here around to the left hand side and we're going to wait for this guy. We're not going to knock him out or do anything to him. We can actually just sneak by him. Uh, just making sure I have the stun gun equipped just in case I decide to use it. It's always important to make sure you have it equipped so you don't accidentally kill someone and not realize it and then have to redo the whole game. Um, without getting any kills so you can actually just sneak by this guy pretty easily I um, I decide to be a little bit patient and uh, wait once he moves away and I see that the other guy turns around using my minimap um, I can just walk by bam hop the gate and I decide to climb up here uh, while these two guys have quite a long conversation that's the best thing I've noticed these two guys always got in my way so I am going to knock one of them out and leave the other one undisturbed. Um, in my opinion, it is best to get one of them and uh, to continue on just in case, although you can improvise a little bit and see if you're able to do it without uh, knocking out either one of them. So I'm going to drop down and uh, this is why I really like the sonar, the night vision goggles because it's literally pitch black in this area. He can't see anything. He hopped over to check on me. If I hopped over, he wouldn't have actually noticed me, but I decided to take him out just in case. Now you're gonna want, want to line up your character right here. Um, you can't be seen by the light unless an enemy looks directly at you with his flashlight. And what you wanna do is you wanna make a run for that door. And by make a run for it, I mean you wanna stay crouched and slowly walk towards it. But you wanna make sure that one guy right behind the um, right behind the wall right there that I'm showing you guys now, you wanna make sure he's not facing uh, across the hall or towards you. So as he passes in front, he might be passing the other way, but once he passes and the other enemies aren't facing you, you'll go through this door and unlock a checkpoint. That's one of the harder parts of this mission. Now this part can be quite difficult, but if you follow exactly what I did, it's quite easy. Make your way down to the basement. I did restart the checkpoint, which will restart all the enemies as always. Um, and then make your way to this vending machine room. You can turn on your night vision. It's very hard to see in this area, but in the very corner of this area, there is a vent. Go through that vent and walk to the very end. At the very end, there will be an enemy that walks back and forth. And um, what you wanna make sure that enemy right there is he's not looking towards you when you come out. If you see him turn around, you have enough time to make it through to this vent. But um, if not, you might wanna wait till he does another full round. Now you'll want to drop down this vent and I believe this triggers another checkpoint. Um, if it doesn't, be very careful because this part's actually a little bit hard and as I can tell it didn't trigger a checkpoint. So make sure that your lights are lit up. That means you're completely in the dark. Um, if you're in the light you can see that the lights on your suit turn off. Now you're going to see me flick back and forth a lot between night vision and regular vision. That's because this area is very hard to see in and there's some really bright spots and some really dark spots. But once this guy turns around, just sneak by him and we're going on the outside right of the room all the way around. And then um, in this little area, make sure you climb. I actually go back around just to double check something. But once uh, you make it to this part, make sure you climb and then park yourself right there against that wall and he's going to give them a little speech about how they're strapped to c4 and whatnot and uh, after that little speech he's going to be able to turn around 
and walk away. As soon as he turns around and starts walking in the opposite direction, assuming there are no enemies that have uh, decided to spawn near him, jump over as you see me do right here, and then press B to get into that mine as fast as possible, and then climb down or slide down to get down as fast as possible. This will trigger a save point. Now at this point, you wanna to go to the right hand side, climb up, press A to jump onto the pipe on the very top, and start shimmying across. You will get a prompt to do an aerial knockout on this guard that I'm climbing above right now. I don't recommend it, but if you do decide to do it, make sure he's in the dark so you don't get spotted. Now this part's a little tricky because of how the walls are aligned. It doesn't always register that you wanna climb, but you wanna jump down and then make sure you climb this little fence. Be careful because if you don't do it properly, you'll jump back on the pipe and that's just a big waste of your time. Shimmy across and I am gonna knock out this enemy. It proved to be a lot easier if I knocked him out and if I just left him there, he just kind of paced back and forth and it took a really long time to pass this section without it. So I'm basically, you're gonna see me drop down, drop down again, and I'm gonna sneak up behind him and do a non-lethal hand-to-hand combat move. Make sure you always have non-lethal hand-to-hand -hand move equipped. Also, that guy for me personally was a high value target. I don't know if he will be for everyone. So make sure that um, if he is a high value target for you, make sure you kill him, uh, rather knock him out and then bag and tag him and that will get you, I believe like $30,000 in credits for when you're done this mission. Now there is a guy that paces back and forth in the hallway in front of me. I uh, got unlucky and he basically walked right in front of me as I was about to leave. So I had to wait for him to make his round and come all the way back around to where he came from. So there he is walking in front of me and once he passes and gets far enough, you can sneak out and walk all the way to the right hand side without being seen. I almost get seen a tiny bit, but that's not a big deal. Once you make it down here, just slide down and you will spawn um, a cutscene. During that cutscene, uh, nothing really, I don't know what happens, to be honest, I forget. But this next section is pretty linear for a little bit of time here. Once we make it to the end of this pipe uh, area, you will see a slightly difficult area. But once we get to it, I'll show you the easy way around it. Climb up the ladder at the end of this sewer tunnel. Climb up again, through the door. And once we make it through the door, um, just walk up and around and there's no enemies just yet. So keep that in mind. Now right here is where it gets a little difficult. You see that car on the ground? Make sure it doesn't spot you. If it spots you, that robot, I tried to see if I could disable it, I could not. Uh, but that robot, if it sees you, you're basically done for. So the best thing to do for this mission, climb up onto these pipes here, climb up again and you get an extra 100 points for exploration but you also be basically get a uh, zone above everyone else where no one will be able to see you. Now you'll have a lot of prompts to do aerial knockouts and jump on people and shimmy across things. I did it very, very simply just by being quite patient and I did this entire section without disturbing any enemies and uh, luckily for me that gives you a ton of points for ghost um, play style. So you might wanna keep that in mind if you're like me and you're going for some of those ghost uh, points. So once that car decides to make its way back to where it was coming from, make sure none of the arrows are looking directly at you and uh, you'll be good to go across this little area of light. Now there is one heavily guarded enemy right there below me, you can see. Uh, so what you're gonna wanna do is drop down on this side here, drop down again, stay crouched, go behind him to the left and you're home free. That section can be very difficult if you don't do it the way I did it. Now there is a dead drop location right here coming up. Um, you're gonna see the fling, screen flicker a little bit for some reason. But um, just drop down, go around and pick up that dead drop if you want it. I mean, it helps towards the collectible achievement in the game and it does give you extra money and points. Now continuing up and around this spiral section uh, there's really not much to be aware of. This section is pretty basic and easy. There will be one enemy here. You can actually just walk around him as you'll see me do. And as soon as you walk past him, it will trigger a save point um, and he won't count as a disturbed enemy. 
So as you see here, you're gonna see the screen flicker a tiny bit, and that was me reloading a checkpoint. Um, and once this checkpoint, there's about two, I think there's two or three enemies, only two of them are really a danger, but another uh, section that you can easily, easily do uh, when the enemies are looking away. So you're gonna wanna go cover to cover from this car to this car, and then uh, wait for that enemy coming on the right hand side of my screen. Uh, he's gonna emerge from that little hallway, turn to his right, and just go up to where he came from, up the ramp, and then climb up the wall and hang yourself right here. Make sure you're uh, on the lower of the end edges. As soon as you see both enemies turn around, hop up, hop up, crouch, walk slowly if you don't have any upgrades uh, because it actually does make a sound whether you walk fast or slow. It does, <coughs> it does make a difference. Shimmy up to the left, then drop down. Do this part as fast as possible because there's an enemy um, where we are going and if you don't do this part fast he kind of catches you so just make sure you keep progressing through drop down as soon as you drop down look to your right hand side go through the vent and once you go through that vent just keep walking all the way to the end of the vent once we get to the end here you're gonna wanna drop down turn back through like turn around go through this door here around uh, up on the desk and through this vent this part is quite long without any save points. Right now, if I died, I'd go all the way back to uh, kind of where I went up the spiral staircase. And then go through here. And uh, this section, I do kill or knock out one enemy. And I didn't know if there was a way to do it without knocking out one of them. There probably is, there always is. And that way would probably be with a sticky noise maker. But I decided to just do it the good old way. And you'll see them talking. You'll want to climb up here, climb up again, and just wait until they finish talking. Once they finish talking, one of them will basically leave the room completely. At that point, when you see the guy on the left leaving, I do an aerial knockout on this guy close to me. And once I do an aerial knockout, I go straight for that door. Now, Behind this door is basically the first kind of open world section where you can decide exactly how you want to do your objectives. What I did was I went for A first, then I went for B, and then I went um, back to A, basically, because after you do both both of them, um, you have to turn off a pump, and that pump's really close to A. So looking back on this section, you might want to try to get B first, and then go for A. The enemy patterns repeat, so it's all the same if you just wait long enough. Uh, when you go for A, just go literally go straight for A, and you can sit right here where I am right now, and wait until all the enemies turn around, go up, up, and uh, use this terminal. The terminal takes about five seconds to hack, keep that in mind, but as long as no enemies are facing your direction, you should be pretty easy. And they do, once they turn away from the terminal, you have a good like 10, 15 second time window to make it. Now we're going to stay low in the shadows because there's no enemies that go around this area here really other than one or two of them. Um, it's a much safer place to go. We're going to go straight for B and I believe you have to do this whole section without um, tripping any alarms or, or killing anyone or dying. Uh, it's probably one of the longer sections of the game where you don't get any checkpoints. And I do improvise quite a bit here which is why getting B was a little sloppy. I think I knock out two people uh, just because they were getting suspicious and I didn't want to take the chance of having to restart all the way back another few minutes. So once I get down here, you can sneak across to uh, the right hand side depending how you're looking at it. But from when you're entering the area, if you're looking towards B, it'll be on the right hand side. Climb up and uh, make sure no enemies are watching. I do wait a good amount of time here because the enemies all decide to have a little meeting here and you'll see like three or four enemies on my screen at once. Now if you want you can mark the enemies to keep track of them. Uh, I, I do like to mark the enemies as often as I can. Uh, I don't think I was able to mark them. Here I try to mark them but they were kind of off my screen. Now once they kind of uh, take their own positions I do decide to climb up, leave that guy there, he's harmless. Climb up and uh, I'm gonna try to sneak towards B. Again, as I said, I improvise, so I do knock one guy out. But if you, uh, there you go, so stun gun him. 
if I did it a little sooner, it would have actually helped. But this guy that you see on my screen right now gets very suspicious. I mark him just to keep track of him. He gets a little suspicious, so when he started running towards his downed uh, teammate, I know I took him out too. Now, the one enemy you see on my... That was a control glitch, and I tried to press one button and something else completely happened. But the one enemy on my screen right now is a heavily uh, guarded enemy. So he uh, has armor and stuff. And the only way to take out armored enemies is through an aerial attack. And since you can't get above him in any way, he is basically indestructible. You can't touch him. You can only go for that terminal when he's not looking and you're positive that he's not looking or else you will get caught and die. Unless you obviously use any type of gun with real bullets and that would be negating the no kills achievement. So when he's standing next to the railing, you can actually just sneak across and he won't see you. Once he turns his back, like you saw right there, you're gonna he go up he goes up the, up the stairs to the left and turns his back. You can use the terminal. So now once you use the terminal, you're gonna get a small little dialogue where they're gonna say that your efforts were basically wasted because uh, you did you took too long and they now you have to turn the manual pipe yourself. And once you get the checkpoint, at least for me, because I maybe it was because I did B last, but the manual. Um, override for the chemicals is actually back near a so again I improvised a way to get there this is my first time through this area personally but I thought I did pretty good um, but basically we're gonna come back exactly where we came from there's a small vent you can use so just go over drop drop um, go through the bottom area here and you'll see a vent now you can use that vent to get from this side to the other side without getting seen. Uh, vents in Splinter Cell tend to be the best route wherever you're going. Vents are always your prime choice if possible. If you see a vent, try your best to use it. Vents are the tickets to success. At the end of the vent, climb the ladder. And now we're going to be trying to sneak towards the manual override. I kind of lost track of it and when I turn around here I notice that it's a lot closer than I thought it was. Um, I don't like these types of ledges because when it says climb you don't know if it's going to climb up all the way or if you're going to grab um, and I wanted to grab onto the ledge but I didn't know if it was going to climb all the way which I hate because they use the word climb for you know grabbing onto a ledge and climbing over the ledge. So once I'm, I'm using obviously the radar which I've upgraded in the Paladin uh, once I see no enemies are looking, I sh get over. And when you jump over in that specific section that I jumped over, you don't have to worry because you jump over into a shadow. Then there's this last guy here. I had no clue what his movement was going to be, and I didn't want to get caught because I just spent like five minutes. But if you make a break for the door and start going at that uh, manual override, the mission ends right here. Um, and that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. As always, make sure to comment, like, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next mission. Um, as always, here is my score screen, which you'll see is very, very ghost-like. Um, let's double check here. I get uh, 13,500 ghost points, no panther points, no assault points. Basically a perfect run. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.